One myth that has echoed through eternity is that of the nation of Atlantis. A nation that maybe existed, maybe it didn't exist, who's to say, nobody really knows. But there are sources that dictate whereabouts Atlantis might have existed. Sadly, those sources contradict themselves and there's about 10 different locations of where Atlantis might have been. So today, we're gonna be a rebuilding Atlantis in EU4 and the goal is that we take back all of those places where hypothetically Atlantis could have been and we're gonna call these places our little outposts. That's right, we're rebuilding the Atlantean Empire, my boys. Before we begin, I want to thank you guys so much for all the support on the channel and if you enjoy the content, consider subscribing, would really help me out so much and encourage me to make more videos like these in the future. Now, when it comes to Atlantis, historically speaking, the way that Atlantis was described is as a city on water, an island surrounded by multiple layers of walls in a vast ocean and in some sources it is described as being outside the gates of Hercules which means outside of the Gibraltar which means somewhere in the Atlantic or by the coast of the Atlantic Ocean. This is why some have been led to believe that Atlantis might be located over here. This structure is known as the Eye of the Sahara and it is located in Mauritania in today's Mauritania anyway and it does actually have some weird resemblance to the description of Atlantis. Obviously, I don't personally think this was actually Atlantis. This is just a weird geological formation, but it kind of looks like, you know, there's different layers, different walls, and this could potentially have been filled up with water, right? Then you have the mountain range in the northern side that is also described in some sources, but whatever the case, we will never know if this was actually Atlantis or not, and the likelihood of this actually being Atlantis is very low, if it ever existed for that matter. But I showed you that because we're gonna start our adventure in the Mauritanian parts ourselves here. <laughs> so that means we're gonna start in the province of Arguin out of all places. I know, right? It's pretty funny. The most useless out of all provinces. We're gonna make this Atlantis. Okay. So of course this means we're gonna set up a custom nation in here. We named it Atlantis. We went with the pretty fancy flag as well. And our leader is Jason Momoa, obviously. Who else would lead Atlantis, right? He is a 666. You can bring back lost cultures like the old Egyptians, Yan Mayanese, Hebrews, Atlanteans, and Athenians. So obviously we're gonna go for the Atlanteans. We will be a totemist nation since we don't know what religion they would have, but clearly they would not have any of the Christian or Muslim religions. So we're just going with the neutral ground here and just saying totemist. Anatolian tech group because it's a really great tech group early on and we want to have strong unit pips, right? Does that mean Atlanteans are Turks? Oh God, what? have I done? <laughs> also going for the tribal despotism because it offers 10% core creation cost reduction and we chose the best sprites out there, the Cornwall sprites. <laughs> Idea wise, we're going for all power cost and the ability to raid coastlines because everybody knows Atlanteans were pirates. Dev cost reduction minus 20%, morale of armies and discipline maxed out, morale of navies as well, average monarch lifespan plus 40% so we get to live a very long time. War score versus other religions minus 25 and everybody is another religion except the new world nations I guess core creation cost minus 20% and admin efficiency plus 10 so that in the later part of the game We can just blob out and in the first part of the game We just develop our nation a lot to make this a little bit easier as well We're also gonna be getting ourselves the island of the Tenerife Which is our little outpost Let's say as well as the islands of Cape Verde and the reason we abandoned the old world And we were not seen there for such a long time is because we we were busy in the new world we have a new world little adventure here trading with these people and teaching them our totemist ways i guess that's why the new world is totemist okay you found out why they're totemist actually since i do have a lot of extra points let's give everybody in the family 666 and we're naming our son jas son and the woman is gonna be jasona okay i'm original this is just originality flowing out of my bottom and of course we also have our little research outpost in the jungles of Africa. I absolutely adore the fact that we can now see both the new world as well as the old world including most of the Asian parts here so we have a pretty good knowledge of what's happening around us just like the Atlanteans would have right? So I've done my estates and I'm not showing that because I've shown it every single video you guys know what you're doing by now right? We're also going to be recruiting a couple of units first and we're going to start getting our claims on the uh, Moroccans as well as at the same time we're going to get our claims 
kingdoms in the southern tip here on the nation of Jolof so we can start expanding into the African parts for those juicy gold mines far too long has Atlantis just stayed in its own little corner in uh, Arguin actually let's rename this I don't like Arguin let's call it Atlantis <laughs> and the city is Atlantis also because originality and schnapps yo uh three development seems not very Atlantean of us does it our main issue obviously is the lack of an economy so uh let's start uh, fixing that by uh, getting a little bit of extra trade in our main trade node of the Ivory Coast oh wow I got the one province here that was not important trade wise I should have went for a Cape Coast instead of the Ivory Coast oh well it is what it is let's uh, turn this over to Atlantean culture first for that matter let's make all of this Atlantean culture in uh, South America too oh no nobody wants to ally us oh this feels so bad what entered the Federation I was like was that a coalition I just started the game come on literally nobody is expecting the Atlantean pirates to come by their coastlines oh yeah baby look at that juicy 48 ducats from the south tip of uh, Gibraltar here and I think it is time that we attack Jolof so let's start by uh, disembarking in Trarza and making our way here damn we killed off their fleets as well beautiful we have fewer troops than they have so until the rest of our reinforcements come this might be a little bit of an issue hopefully they don't attack us whilst we disembark here all right these guys seem to be safe and sound there and boy Shaka, we got that province noise that means we can kill off their fleet completely and that means also we can just move the fleet in here so we don't wait for them to disembark nice all right boys i think we need to also get a few more units you know what i'm actually gonna get a mercenary company let's hire the free company in traza no matter if you're european or atlantean you still go for the free company this is just common knowledge oh this is just beautiful sir fetishist zealots just spawned and killed off their entire army oh i i, I love this i love this game already i'm gonna have to go around the fetishists for now i'll let them siege this down and then i'll just kill them before they finish sieging it don't feel like going to jenna considering i have to cross over the great mali rebel sea jesus mother of god these guys must have oh whoa okay the rebels just enforced and the nation of Fulo just appeared out of those rebellions, I guess. All right, they got 49% uh, progress. So by killing them, we got the progress for ourselves, which means we're about to take the siege without having wasted our own manpower pool. Hot diggity dog, Wolof is ours. Let's uh, make our way to Jenin now. It's legit a true minefield of rebellions here, man. We found uh, Jolof's army though, so let's kill these boys off. It was nice knowing you, Jolof, but uh, you know, you, you just, you got to go hot ah, dang it i had to chase these boys all the way into the jungles now i'm worried that i might get some of those jungle people spring out and kill my army afterwards get the schnapps out of here oh really even one more retreat seriously bro all right we took care of them eventually obviously because we started with a 666 ruler we were the first ones to get admin and military tech and diplotech i would have gotten if i didn't use the diplo in order to uh, just culturally convert these areas to atlantean hey i managed to even get this one as well because i just have so many mana points and Jenny is done, so let's go ahead and uh, piece these boys out. I wouldn't normally pillage capital, but considering we have only like three development in our capital, <laughs> I am going to pillage capital this time for Jenny. And our new territory of Jolof is established, boyos. Absolutely amazeballs. Concentration, of course. Let's make Atlantis great again, shall we? <laughs> there goes the entirety of Mali's army here. 3,000 brave souls that got their asses kicked by the rebels. Honestly, I, I was going to attack Mali, but I'm just going to wait till the rebels in force and then i can just attack whatever is left i just realized um mali's provinces are basically useless look at this 100 autonomy 100 autonomy 100 autonomy every one of their provinces except the capital has 100 autonomy holy schnapps man i'm basically gonna get nothing after i take these provinces oh Let's do the quick war, I guess. Actually, on the bright side, because they're allied to Kong, Kong also has a gold mine, don't they? Yes, they do in Lobi. So maybe I can just take Kong, and uh, this gold mine has zero autonomy. So after I take it, I actually can get some money out of this one at least. This whole time, my biggest fear is that they get some rebellions pop out again in their country, and then I have to fight their rebellions for them. <laughs> Stop running away from me, Kong. Come on. We, we, we can have a little bit of a chat here, can't we? We get a new general, actually, for that matter. 
There you go. Because, you know, you need a general to have a chat, clearly. And did my other general just die? Oh, no, that was my fleet guy. And, of course, they're getting a lot of rebels again. Okay, you know what? We can do our peace deal. So, let's go for this here. Because this way, I have access to most of the parts that I'm interested in. Including access to uh, Timbuktu, Jene, and all the other areas here. And I'm kind of bypassing most of Mali since it's pretty much poo-poo land as it is. Oh, look! The Emperor just passed the first reform already. Holy snaps. Oh, dang. I just realized their gold mine was in Bure. Oh, I didn't take the gold mine. This is such a Pepega moment. But they're at war with Fulo, so uh, let's get a claim on Fulo. Maybe then uh, we can just take the stuff from Fulo afterwards. Whilst all of this is happening, I'm patiently waiting for the Moroccans to go to war with the Castilians, and then I swoop in and I take over the Moroccan lands myself after. Dang, look at Jenny over here killing off Timbuktu. <laughs> and you know what? My money is on the Mali rebels instead of Fulo. Looks like Mali rebels are actually gaining more than Fulo is. Massive bra moment. They defeated 6,000 units, then another 6,000 instantly spawned in and crushed them. Oh, the rebels are killing each other as well. Holy snaps, man. Oh, but we got the free company from Fulo. Hell yeah, boys. It really feels like an endless row of freaking rebels spawning in what's left of Mali. I feel like they kind of exaggerated with the rebel events for this country overall. It's really unplayable if you're not a little bit of an experienced player and even so it can be really tough as an experienced player too. I'm curious if uh, Morocco's at war now. Let's check it out. They're not at war with Castile from what I can tell but they are at war with Lemchen and they basically already won that war so. Now that I really think about it I actually need to get a land corridor to the Moroccan so I'm gonna go for Tuat which means I'm gonna go for Jene but before that I have to kill off uh, Yatenga, finish off these boyos so we have an easier access to the uh, Jenian lands. Plus, we've basically consolidated most of the uh, Atlantean Niger over here. We've got a little bit of a coalition uh, creeping up against us in the uh, Niger area, but nothing to be worried about. Also, I just noticed that the Palatinate became the HRE Emperor. What the schnapps is happening in Europe, man? Every time I'm playing outside of Europe, all the interesting stuff is happening. And when I'm playing in Europe, it's just boring land, okay? But not to fear, we're getting back to Europe very soon. Hey, we got the emergence of the Fulani, my boys. We can play as Fulo. No, no, thank you. I'm, I'm not gonna play as Fulo. Thank you very much. Um, I'm gonna kill Fulo, though. Also, I have to say it. I hate fighting the rebels in this area. Like, half this playthrough already has been just freaking fighting rebellions, man. Let's get back on track here and uh, work our way towards the Moroccan lands, like we said earlier. I feel like Fulo didn't live up to its uh, full potential here because, you know, we, we killed them. Hot dang! Cannon Bornu just wiped out air and they made them release Songhai. Okay, that's uh, that's uh, quite a bit of a predicament here. I'm gonna wait. Maybe Songhai is gonna kill Timbuktu or Jenny. If not, I'm gonna kill them all. And uh, boys, we're not Atlantis Niger anymore. We are now simply known as Atlantis. Finally, Morocco is also at war with the Castilians. So that's my cue for budging in and attacking the Moroccans also. Not gonna cobbledrate Granada. I have enough things to deal with. I'm probably gonna have a second war at the same time to consolidate the rest of the Niger Delta. I want to take care of uh, Nope, Oyo, and Benin, so I don't need to worry about my southern flank here. I hate doing this, but I'm gonna have to take some more loans, so I'm gonna go for the burger loans now, and with these loans, I'm gonna get a new mercenary company, the Grand Company, and I'm gonna keep the Grand Company in charge of killing off the rebels here, plus taking care of Benin and all those boyos. And if we're a little bit lucky, the Moroccans are gonna focus on the Castilians more than they're gonna focus on us. Well, it does seem like the Portuguese are making leeway in the northern parts of Morocco, and it seems like the Tunisians are allied to the Ottomans and in the war against the Albanians. That's gonna be a bit of a problem for us later on, I guess. Byzantium is completely gone. The Emperor is still, I believe, the Palatinate. Yes, it is. And, oh my freaking god, what? Stettin, what the schnapps? I really feel like Stettin somehow is pretty, pretty buffed secretly. How come this is like the third game Stettin's been freaking mad? Massive in this area, man. And the Teutons is a one province miter. Oh, if I was Brandenburg, I would be so happy to see this instant vassalization and feeding up of the, all the other cores, of course. My favorite part is how the Castilians declared the war, but the Portuguese definitely reaped the benefits of this particular war. Time to also test our troopers. Let's see how great our units are compared to the Moroccans. Oh, that is insane. We literally stack wiped them instantly, dude. Holy mother of God, I feel 
like I made this country a little bit too powerful, maybe? I mean, the 20% morale by itself is a massive boost, to be fair. And let's see how fast these units are gonna basically dissolve. Oh, that is, that is pretty freaking fast as well, dissolving. We didn't stack wipe them, though, so uh, kind of weird. But I don't know if I want to even continue this war, actually. So my main idea with this war was that I want to use the Moroccan so I can get a little bit closer to Europe. And that's what I just did now. I got Oran, Merzel Kibir, 9136. I can get a little bit more stuff here, I guess. I don't know. Maybe I can take some provinces from Granada and then attack the Castilians afterwards. Since I do need the islands here that belong to Castile's vassal, well, personal union, junior partner, Aragon. Yep, I am totally getting this. Let's barrage it as well. I guess this is the first true European holding that we get in uh, this playthrough, at least. So you could say now that Atlantic Atlantis is back in Europe and it's really angry at everybody in Europe and wants to kill them all for some reason apparently. Also, we got a massively increased range so let's start raiding the coastlines again. Oh yeah. And speaking of coastlines, I think I'm gonna take the entirety of this coastline from Morocco and I'll take the northern parts in the next war I guess since I already have a connection to Europe from Granada. We also decided to go back to our roots and explore the rest of the world here by going for exploration ideas and the Castilians just just started a crusade against the Moroccans. Moroccans got attacked previously by the Tunisians as well, I believe. Yes, this is a Tunisian conquest of Morocco. So I strongly suspect that Morocco is not going to be around in the next few years. And I am going to take advantage of this uh, Castilian attack on Morocco. And I'm going to attack Castile myself. Let's go with the conquest of Hayen. And I'm not really conquering Hayen. I'm just going to take their islands from the Aragonese. I'm also doing this because the Castilians started getting colonies by the coastline here in uh, the Ivory Coast. I don't want the Castilians to have any colonies here. These are all my lands. Let's get another general as well and uh, we should be able to win this fairly easy since we have way better troops than they have. Let's check our army quality. So we got 4.8 morale. They got 4.7? Oh, they got crusade and last jousting tournament. Okay, that might actually be an issue. We still have 10% more discipline though than them. So I still feel confident that we're gonna have an easy time winning this war. That being said, I think we're gonna focus on the port Portuguese first since they're not a junior partner and we can separately piece out the Portuguese. In fact, I'm gonna rush this a little bit. I'm gonna barrage and I'm also gonna be assaulting this if it doesn't fall soon. Didn't fall. Let's just assault it right now. There you go. Come on, boys. Let's take uh, Evora, please. Pretty, please. Is that gonna be enough for us to get a white piece? Let's see. It is not enough. 1761. What? Wow. They actually want me to just completely wipe out their nation, don't they? Oh, they even built another fort in Braganza. Ah, oh, that makes sense man. I gotta take that fort in that case. I cannot just piece them out then. And if I'm taking so many forts from them, well, then in that case, I kind of also want to take some other land. We do not have naval supremacy, however, so uh, that's a little bit of a hindrance here since they have free reign over moving around our North African provinces right now. The juicy part about this war is the fact that I can just uh, burn the colonies of the Castilians so they're never gonna be able to get these lands here because I'm gonna get them before them. <laughs> I'm very fast, my boy. For once, I wish that these sieges would actually fall at 7%, but no, no, as always, why would they when they can just go up to 50 something percent for the player, but 7% for the AI? Oh, 5% professionalism. I'll take that. Thank you very much. What was I saying? 71%, boys. Can we get a 90% maybe? All right, so now that we occupy their entire country with the exception of the North African provinces, we can take these two islands here 104, 90. Let's uh, get some money as well, and no coalition because nobody cares about the Portuguese, as expected. Excuse me, what now, Potiguara? You just declared war on my colony of Brazzers? Sir, I cannot let you do that, okay? I'm gonna have to enforce my peace on this. I'm putting my foot down, and if you don't step away from Brazzers, I'm gonna end you. Yep, looks like I'm gonna have to end you, Potiguara. I love having cannons, and look how cheap it is. So, the thing is, we got our national ideas that offer all power costs minus 10%. That means it's 10% cheaper to do the barrages. And we also have 47 innovativeness, which again means that we got minus 4.7 all power cost. So everything that involves mana is roughly 15% cheaper for us, which is absolutely insane. Let's see how much you guys value your sieges. Are you going to reinforce your boys here that are going to get stack wiped? Or are you just going to stay on your siege and try and uh, hope that I'm not going to kill them off completely? Well, looks like they're staying on the siege actually. Oh, you bastards. Really? 
That freaking fell already? Bruh. Massive bra moment. I'm gonna try and relieve this. Well, not relieve it since it's already taken, but I'm gonna try and take it back, essentially. Avec le die bastards, and let's go. Barrage, assault ski. This is ours. Thank you very much. Wasn't yours for too long, was it? To wait for these guys to get movement locked, and you're also dead. I love how the uh, Castilian pretender rebels just randomly decided to spawn at this moment when their country's getting absolutely raffle stomped by the Atlanteans. You know, logically speaking, if I was a rebellious faction i would not spawn in when my country is getting ravaged i'd i'd wait until the war is over at least sometimes slackening recruitment is almost the same like exploiting because you literally just fix all of your manpower issues by clicking a single button it's so freaking broken man so by essentially avoiding all of the aragonese lands and just focusing on sieging down the castilian lands what happened was the aragonese became disloyal and because they became disloyal they're not helping out the castilian which means that this is basically a piece of cake where I'm literally just uh, bullying the Castilian troops here and I will also be uh, killing him off here in the Battle of Toledo. The famous Battle of Toledo. Look at my boys here. Look at those juicy rolls. I got eight dice roll. Hala freaking La Huya. Meanwhile, the New World is offering our Brazzers colony even more lands, pumping up that um, Brazzers spirit, let's say. And guess what? The Castilians folded 92.89. I can get all the islands that I want, which is Sardinia, the Balearic Islands, and Malta, as well as the Canary Islands, well, what's left of it, plus a little bit of cash on the side. Let's go with this peace treaty here. And these are most of the islands that historians throughout the ages pinpointed as being where Atlantis is from, but there's one island missing from that. And I'm gonna have to figure out a way of actually getting to this area of the map, because right now, the only way I have is basically to snake all across North Africa somehow. Truce is over with the Moroccans, so it's time to attack them once more, and this time we're taking a bigger chunk than we took last time. Castile is on a rampage, dude. They went for the restoration of Union against the uh, Neapolitans now. Damn. Oh, this is brilliant. We can fully annex the Moroccans, and literally nobody even cares about them getting annexed. I love that. That's, that's my favorite part about annexing people, when nobody cares about them. So, I just discovered the New World, right? Well, parts of the New World here in the Caribbean. Caribbean, and I'm noticing a trend with the nations of the New World. I don't know why, but this nation here of Ichishi and this one of Hasinai always manages to get control of all of these lands. And at this point, the entire coastline here is owned by these natives because the Portuguese didn't really do much in the New World and they only have a few provinces here. Plus, the Castilians have been completely cucked by myself. I have a strong suspicion that the New World's gonna have a very different shape in this run. Also, Kilwa decided they want to completely wipe out Mutapa. So, um, we got a new great power in the eastern parts of Africa. We just finished building the largest galley fleet Atlantis has ever seen and we're gonna use these boys in our war against the Tunisians together with the Ottomans here since we're gonna use Tunis to get the lands we need from the Ottomans and we are gonna need naval supremacy for that of course. So obviously the first part revolves around crushing the entirety of the Tunisian and the Ottoman fleets before advancing into the mainlands here. I'm basically chasing down the Ottoman fleet, they're trying to retreat into the eastern Black Sea and the Sea of Azov, okay. Well, that's the last place you can stay, okay, Ottoman fleet? No more hiding holes for you. Oh, I'm losing that battle. Oh, God, I'm actually losing that. I got a seven. They got a zero. Come on, we need to win. I got a zero. We're gonna lose this so badly. Come on, boys. We can do it. We got a nine. Oh, thank God for that nine. We won simply because of that juicy nine we got at the end. But uh, we're gonna have to rebuild our fleets. Well, we're gonna have to fix our ships, that is. We're taking out the forts in North Africa super fast as well because of our huge amount of cannons in these armies. Some of these forts are harder to take, so I'm just gonna be barraging and assaulting them to get them a little bit faster. I wanna take most of the Tunisian lands before the Ottomans arrive here, essentially. And, of course, colonialism spawned in Porto instead of spawning in good old Atlantis because why wouldn't it spawn in Porto, right? When we have a massive amount of colonies whilst they just have a few provinces. I really feel like the game is massively AI biased sometimes, man. Occupying literally all of Tunis was a piece of cake, 
but <laughs> occupying the Ottoman lands is not a piece of cake. However, because we have naval supremacy, we were able to occupy the islands here with a small expeditionary force. And we're gonna need to take Lesbos, Chio, Crete, and uh, Cyprus, I believe. And I think Negropont as well. These were locations for Atlantis at various points. False locations, obviously, since we all know Atlantis originates in Mauritania, am I right? But yeah, we need to take this from the Ottomans. The Ottomans are not gonna agree to anything. Look at this. Even for a white piece, they don't agree to anything. However, let me tell you how EU4 works, my son. Because EU4 is a special game. Look at this. Because the Tunisians are the war leader, and because I occupied these provinces that I won from the Ottomans, the Tunisians can and will give me these provinces as long as I agree to basically leave them alone. Let me get a little bit of money as well from them. And Dariago boys didn't fight a single battle against the Ottomans, except naval battles, of course. And I managed to get the islands that uh, at some point were depicted as uh, outposts of Atlantis. And hey, it seems to be correct because they definitely are now outposts of Atlantis, aren't they? If you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like. If we get 10,000 likes, I'm gonna do another custom nation video. And until the next time, check out this awesome random nation video. And I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers. I would not be able to do this without all your support. 